Hey, welcome back to part two of finishing the dome. And uh, today's video, we are going to do some more filling, some sanding, some priming, some more sanding, some more priming, and probably a little bit more sanding by the end of it. So let's get straight to it, shall we? I have at this point probably three thick coats of primer, uh, filler primer on this. And I'm going back with a sponge backer pad on my sandpaper. And we're going to sand off these three coats. Now it's pretty, it's pretty rough right now. And I might even have a couple drips or so in this, but that's okay. But what I'm trying to accomplish at this point is just to get everything knocked back down, make sure that there are no layer lines in it or anything like that. Using 400 grit at this point, not bearing down, just nice and easy sanding and we're gonna go and sand this dome. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of this sanded in the lower parts in the upper pie dome area, and then we'll move back into the workbench. We got the sanding done and I'm pretty happy with it. I need to go out in the sunlight probably or some higher, uh, a little bit more lighting in here and just inspect what we're looking at. We want a perfectly smooth finish. I've got some minor, minor orange, or not orange peel, but the, the bump, bumpiness of the paint right here, it looks like. Um, yeah, I saw it small low spot in here still print line left so just go over this and inspect it really close and then i'm going to clean it off i'm going to hit it with a flat black one coat not super thick and i'm going to wet sand off all the black and that's going to show me where those lower spots are and actually i think i will do that now we'll just go straight to the flat black so that you can see which you're not gonna be able to see them on camera i'm sure but there are a couple pits in here still and we'll get that i'm gonna get the dome cleaned and we'll go over and hit it with some flat black It's wet sanding time. I'm gonna use a thousand grit because I noticed when I sprayed my black on, we have almost no print lines. I'm gonna get that paper nice and wet. So I'm gonna link a card up here at the top somewhere on another wet sanding video as to why we do it, how we do it. I'll be honest with you, I'm always, always learning uh, changing what I do, how I do it, and all that good stuff. This might be a little different than that video, but not much. Still the same concept, except I don't have my spray bottle with me, so let me grab that real quick. My workbench today is quite the mess. All right, so this black has sat for a little bit. It's probably not fully cured, if I'm being completely honest with you. And what we're gonna do is just come in and we are gonna wet sand with this thousand grit. And all we're trying to do, I'm not gonna take all the black off this time. I'm gonna get it close though. We're gonna make sure that we keep our, I'm using a sponge pad here underneath it. Sorry, you can't see a thing with the water bottle in the way. One of our subscribers made the comment the other day that don't use your fingers to do this. And that is true, because I think in the last video I did. Of course, that was my bad, I was in a hurry. And I normally do use my sponge pad. Get the right curve of this thing. But he's right. And just keep sanding this down. And you can feel it as you're doing it with a thousand grit. As you're going, as you start, there's a little bit of resistance and then you can just feel it get nice and smooth and slick. And that's what we're going for. This will show you high spots and low spots as you're going. 
if you have any pits or holes or anything like that. And again, if you're doing a multi-part dome that you had to glue together, you might have to do a little more filling than normal on this. This dome is, in my opinion, it is kind of cheating printing it all in one print because I know a lot of people don't have that ability on a large printer. If you can though, oh, it makes life so much simpler. That is looking beautiful. Very beautiful. All right. Well, I'm going to cut the camera here to get these side pieces because I have to do them off the edge of the table. So now I'm getting ready to lay down my coat of black primer one more time. And then we're going to use steel wool to smooth that out. So if you've watched any of the previous videos, you'll know that I am not at all a fan of gloss black. And the reason is I don't want to wait on the cure times. So now that I've put down my flat black prime coat, getting ready for the silver that we're going to add to it, I have I'm going to let this completely cure, probably wait 24 hours. I am going to go through and I'm going to lightly steel wool everything, sand it smooth again so that it's a full black coat. Now we are just going to move right in and use some four zero, quadruple zero steel wool, get off any impurities here. We've got this baby sanded very, very smooth. So we're not trying to sand anything with the steel wool. We're just trying to get off any bumps and anything like that that might be left on there from that last spray. I've already inspected this dome and it looks great. There are no real problems or anything like that on it. It's very, very smooth, very smooth. Thanks for joining us today, guys. And I hope you learned something and you can catch the next part where we paint the dome. Uh, we were going to do a rub and buff on the next part of that, but I'm doing a separate video on the rub and buff. But again, hope you learned something. Like and subscribe and help support the channel. We really appreciate it. And as always, we will see you in the next video.